Good evening. So it's about quarter to nine on Thursday evening. I just dropped my youngest back off at the house. We went for our walk tonight. We actually walked for about an hour and a half tonight. I was shocked. Um, usually my back kind of taps out at the 45 minute hour mark. <laughs> so yay me. <clears throat> Monkey's so good. He's such a sweet kid. <clears throat> he sits at home all day long and does absolutely nothing. He just sits in the house and like, you know, watches the YouTubes and, you know, goofs around with some toys and that's pretty much all he does all day long. The only time that little boy gets outside is when I come home and, you know, take him out for a walkabout. So... Last night, we didn't do that. I, I was I was friggin' tired. Um, and I just said, screw it. And I just didn't get up off the couch last night. <clears throat> so I said to him, today, when I got home from work, you know, I'm really sorry about last night, bud. I said, but you know, if you really want to get out of the house and go for a walk, if you come in and say, you know, mama, I really need to get out of this house. I need to go for a walk. I will drag my sorry ass off the couch, put my shoes on, and we will go for a friggin' walk. Like, I'll live. It's fine. <laughs> you know, the poor kid. So, he laughed at me and gave me a hug. And I know, Mom. I was like, okay, well, like, do it. Because, you know, I mean, I said to him tonight, like, after after dinner and I tidied up and everything and oh shit I forgot to set the dishwasher up um I said like around what around six ish um because dinner was done and I got everything tidied up and like I killed it tonight I, I am that good so I said you know I have to go take a power nap Give me like an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. I'll set my alarm. Usually I get up within 45 minutes to an hour, but I said, I will set my alarm just in case. And if I get up sooner, great. If not, I'll set it for an hour. Um, and by seven o'clock, you know, we'll, uh, get up and, and go for a walk. I prefer to go for a walk around seven anyway. Because the sun's down a little bit, it's a little cooler. It wasn't muggy today, but it was hot. So, he's like, yeah, that's fine. Go do what you gotta do. So, I locked up the house. And I went and had a power nap for about an hour. I think I got up. I actually woke up. I was awake when my alarm went off, but I was just kind of laying there. Um... And then I had to answer some texts. I got a couple of texts while I was laying down. Oh, you think you're coming in. Screw you, bud. Oh, fuck. It did get in. Get out. No, don't. I got a spider in here. Hang on a second. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Purse saved the day. <laughs> Just a little one. Blech. I don't care. Spider's a spider. Arachnids? No way. We don't do that. Anywho, fucking Jesus. Blech. Um, yeah, I had to answer some texts. I got a couple texts while I was laying down. One of them being from Monkey's stepmom. She texted me. Now, I have tentative plans for him to get together with his cousin, hopefully Saturday. Um, but I had said to his stepmom last weekend you know I want to keep him for this weekend specifically so that he can get together with his cousin and you know they can you know go swimming or we can go over there whatever I don't really care um but I want him to spend some time with his cousin <laughs> and I'm supposed to cut his hair and monkey could use a haircut too so to you know get all that done awesome um But his stepmom texted me tonight 
and told me she broke her damn foot. And she's got two toddlers at home. <clears throat> and I do believe that Monkey's dad, I think she said that he was working nights. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week. So he'll pretty much be sleeping during the day. Um, and so she was asking me if I would mind dropping Monkey off on Sunday, you know, Sunday evening, Monday evening, something like that. And if he could stay a week to help her out um, with the kids and stuff, I would imagine she's supposed to stay off her foot as much as possible and keep it up for a bit. And, you know, I've never broken a, a foot or whatever, but I've never broken a bone before, but I would imagine that she's supposed to stay off it as, as much as possible. I mean, as much as a mom can, right? Like, so I texted her back and I was like, holy crap, my dude, like that just totally sucks. Um, like, of course I said, I can bring him over Saturday night if that helps you. Like, you know, he can, you know, hopefully spend the day Saturday with his cousin and then after dinner, I'll, I'll bring him over. Like, absolutely. <sighs> um, and I think her mom's coming down to help her out too on some point on Saturday. So, um, So that's all settled and, and I talked to I talked to my youngest about it and he's like, Well of course I'll go. Like you know. And I said, Well I figured as much. I mean your stepmom needs you, you go help her. Like go help her. <laughs> like if it were me, you best trust and believe that if you had, you know, younger siblings, you you would be doing some of the heavy lifting, my friend. <clears throat> so, you know. Uh, uh, he's so sweet. He's like, of course, Uncle. Like, it's not even a question. Like, of course. So, it's more his sister. His sister's a real handful. She's a sweetheart. I, I, you know, she's a beautiful kid. But she is a handful. Like, she's very energetic. She's very strong-willed. Like, she is my eldest. If my eldest was a, you know, three-year-old girl, <laughs> they, they are one and the same. He was, he was exactly the same way. It was his way or the highway. He was very energetic. He was very strong-willed. He was the equivalent of having three toddlers in the house and she is very much the same way. But she listens very, very well to monkey. So absolutely no problem I said I, I will drop him off right after dinner on Saturday it, it's not even a question so we're gonna do that <clears throat> but and then I said to him you know I just you know now we're ready you know answered those texts I was like okay let's go for our walk so we drove down to the park and and we walked and we talked and whatever and it was nice. You know, I had to sit down for a bit. My back started really yelling at me. So I was like, you know, I'm sorry, monkey. I got to sit down for a minute. I'm going to have a cigarette. Just, you know, enjoy the breeze. There's a beautiful breeze on the water tonight. And uh, he's like, yeah, whatever. Like, it's all good. So we sat. There's a big water fountain down there. We sat and talked and I had a cigarette and waited for my back to kind of calm down a little bit and uh <sighs> he's so sweet I said do you want to keep walking a little bit or or like it, it's up to you like if you want to keep walking I I will peel myself up off these rocks and you know we'll walk until my back starts to bother like once my back like then I'm done and he's like yeah he says well he says I wouldn't mind walking a little bit cool so we walked not far uh probably about to where i'm parked now no the other parking lot i'm about three parking spots away from where we parked tonight so the second one over here which isn't far from where we parked tonight but it was an extra i don't know 
five or ten minutes, I guess. And I just said, I'm sorry, but like my back is done. <laughs> my back is so done. It's always fine by, you know, the next work day, but the whole night after work, my back is just like not happy with me. So I said, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, I cannot walk anymore. I, I have to. And he's like, no, 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 no. So he says, Mama, we did like an hour and a half tonight. I said, fuck off. He was like, yeah. So I looked at the time and the shit, yeah, we did like an hour and a half. So like, okay, I don't feel bad at all. <laughs> I, said, I said, if you don't mind, I'm going to, you know, we're going to go get me a coffee because, you know, because. I'm going to take you home and uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to go vlog for a little bit. And of course, he's like, yeah, like, go do you. That, that's fine. So that's what I did and here I am. How are you? <laughs> oh, that was the recap of the night. <clears throat> so I slept a little better last night. I still, I, I'm not sleeping well. I'm not sleeping well. I'm having weird dreams. I literally like wake up like sitting up in bed and like looking around and it's like what in the fuck was that? Like it's just, where did that come from? <laughs> like I, I I I don't get it. It kind of started around the time I turned 40. I don't know what it's about. And back then, like that was 4 years ago. Back then, it was weird dreams of like, like kids, like having more kids, which I think, I think a lot of women go through when they hit 40 because, you know, there comes a point where it's just medically dangerous to have kids, right? And my tubes are tied, okay? I got my tubes tied after I had monkey because we done. <laughs> I was one of those, I could not stand being pregnant. I hated everything about it. Everything. I hated everything about it. It sucked. <laughs> I was miserable for 10 months. Miserable. <sighs> Fucking hated it. Love my children. Hated being pregnant. So, and I was like, I was in my early 30s when I had him. So I was done. That's it. Like done. Done. But then when I turned 40, I started having dreams about kids and babies and all this kind of shit. You wake up and kind of be like, um, easy there, tough guy. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> now... The dreams have turned to more like, so stupid. The baby thing I get, that's like a whole, you know, your, your ticking clock bullshit, like whatever, like that, that I kind of get. It's still insane, but it's not stupid. <laughs> this is stupid. Now my dreams are more like, well, they're, they're still like a kid fat feel to it. Like I, I don't actually dream of kids and babies and whatever, which I was when I turned 40. Like I would literally wake up like rubbing my belly, like that kind of thing. It was really fucking weird. But I kind of understood where that came from, right? That whole midlife thing or whatever, you know. Okay, fine. Now it's like... Um, sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> now it's more like living with somebody and not necessarily my current boyfriend, just, just living with somebody. It like, I never see a person. It's just like a feeling, right? Like I don't have dreams where 
well, when I was having the baby dreams, I saw babies. It was generally when I dream, I don't, it's not like visual flashes. It's not like watching a movie. Like I don't see anything. It's feelings, right? So when I have a nightmare, I wake up and I'm just looking around like that feeling of somebody chasing you or somebody's after you, somebody's trying to hurt you or somebody is hurting you. Like I've woken up with bruises because like I hit, like I'll dream of being attacked and I'm positive if you walked in on me having a dream like that, I would be hitting myself because I wake up bruised. Like it's ridiculous. That hasn't happened since I was a teenager. But when I was a teenager, that shit used to happen all the time. So it's more feelings that I have, right? And when I wake up, it's very powerful and sometimes overwhelming. It sometimes sends me into a panic attack. Like I wake up panicking, like it's crazy. And I don't know why and whatever, right? Because I just have all these feelings. And I've come to sort of conclude that these are just my, it's just the way that I, I dream, right? So I have these, I've been having these dreams of like living with somebody like like a man a boyfriend whatever okay a friend with benefits however the hell you want to put it i don't feel like we're married or anything just living together because marriage would never fucking happen <sighs> and for some re and it wakes me up and i'm like looking around it's like what the fuck <laughs> And it freaks me out because I don't get where that's coming from. I have no wish to live with anybody. Like, I can't wait. I love my kids. I love them with my whole chest, okay? They're the best things that ever happened to me. Love them. I'd kill for them. No questions asked, okay? But I cannot wait to be home alone. <laughs> I've never had that. I went from living with my mom and I paid room and board at her house. Okay. I did not live for free. I bought my own food. I bought my own clothes. I paid her room and board. Um, so I went from doing that to living with my eldest boy's dad. Okay. Um, because we had been engaged for a while. And then when I found out I was pregnant, I felt I had to leave home. But as I was in hairdressing school at the time, I could not afford to go out on my own. So I moved in with my then fiance. It just made sense, right? <clears throat> then we were married for about three years, I think. And when that fell apart, I went from living, you know, with him to living with just me and my, and my eldest, right? Who would have been about two when we moved out. And then after he turned three, we moved to this town again where it was the two of us right in a new town and from there i don't know it was probably three so two years later two years later i met my youngest boy's dad and he just kind of moved in. <laughs> like he just, he kind of came over one day and never left. <laughs> and when I moved from my, I was living in a townhouse then. When I bought the house that I'm currently in, he just kind of came with me. And when, when he came with me, we kind of had this talk where it was like, okay, the idea here is, because he had just finished college and was looking for work and all that kind of stuff, right? And I said to him, okay, here's the deal, bud. 
<laughs> because I think my divorce had like just cleared or was starting to come to an end. Like that was a whole ordeal. That was, that went on forever. And I just wanted me time. Like I just, I just wanted me and my kid and live my life. And you know, I liked, I mean, I liked having a boyfriend, you know, who doesn't, but because then you get to have grown up time, but I didn't want a live in situation. I didn't want that. Like I, mm, it was very gun shy on that. I, I, I didn't want that kind of commitment. I wanted somebody to go to dinner with on occasion and do grown up things with and, you know, but not to live with me. Like, I want you to, you know, go away and have your own life <laughs> and, you know, we'll do our thing later. Like, you know, you get the gist. Um, but I would said, you know, if you're going to stay here, it's until you're on your feet, right? Get a job, pay down some of that student loan and get the fuck out. Like, right? Well, then I got pregnant and it was like, okay, well, I guess we're doing that now. So we kind of changed the rules a bit and he had to start paying for stuff. Well, he had started paying, like he was paying for, he wanted, um, internet. Now I didn't have a computer back then and I didn't want one, right? He wanted, he had a laptop and he wanted internet. And I said, okay, well, then here's the deal. We'll bundle it in with my home phone and my cable because I had a home phone and I had cable back then. And that's your bill to pay. You handle the internet, the phone, and the cable. All one bill. That's all you, bud. And that's all he paid. Then if, when we went grocery shopping, if I was short, obviously you eat here too, give me some money and I'll go pick up the food. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's kind of how we worked it until I went on mat leave and we had to rework things again because mat leave means less money, but whatever. And obviously that didn't work out because we're not together anymore and haven't been for years. So to have these dreams of living with somebody freaks the shit out of me. <laughs> like, where in the shit is that coming from? Where is your head at, girl? Like, have you learned nothing? <laughs> like, marriage is a no. Common law is a no. Like, don't live with other people. <laughs> take care of the ones you are legally obligated to take care of. Get them to be, you know, contributing adults and get them the fuck out. Like, and then live your, you know, best adult life on your own. Like, <laughs> is kind of where I stand on all that. It's like, fuck, I can't wait to be on my own. Like I said, I've never had that. I, I, I never, you know, I never went away to college. You know, my brother did that. I never did that. I, you know, didn't want to do the college. I didn't do college until I was like in my forties, late thirties, early forties. Like, yeah. So... When I had, when I wake up with these dreams or feelings or whatever, I'm really looking at, like, I'm looking around to see, like, is somebody here? Like, the, <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> because I know in my heart of hearts, I don't want that. It sounds all romantic and everything and. Sometimes I get really sad when my boyfriend leaves on the, you know, on a Sunday, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to leave. But I do because I know that, you know, in a couple of days time, it's going to be like, okay, you've been here for a few days now. Like, you, <laughs> like, I'm so done cooking for you and shit. Get the fuck out of here. Like, you're a grown ass man. Go handle that yourself. <laughs> Like, I am so over taking care of people. Like, I, I, by nature, am actually a very selfish person, to be, to be quite real. I do not enjoy 
taking care of people. It's, it's not something that I, you know, dreamt about as a little girl. Like, no, far from, far, far, far from. Um, and like I said, I love my children. I would walk on fire for my children. I would kill for my children. I would do anything for them. Love them to pieces. They are the reason why I am still here. Okay. I literally owe my kids my life. All right. They, mm -hmm. having said that, I find it very frustrating taking care of people all the fucking time. Right. I find it very frustrating to have these people in my home that, you know, I've spent nights up with when they're sick and still gone to work the next day and, you know, sacrificed a lot of things that I wanted to do be for them because it was better for them. And, you know, I, I would do it all again, hands down, no questions asked, you know. But, <laughs> you know, kids don't think to ask their parents how their day was or, you know, if they're a little quieter than usual, are you okay? Or, you know, they just, they just don't. Kids just don't think to do that, right? And they think that as a parent, for you to say to your children, how are you doing? How was your day? What did you do today? Who'd you hang with? Like anything like that you're just being intrusive you're nosy like you know right that's just kind of the way that it works <clears throat> and I find that extremely frustrating <laughs> I hate that you know I live with two people that you know can't be bothered to ask me how my day was when I come home <laughs> And I know that that's just the nature of the beast. However, I feel the way I feel about it, right? Like I can't, you know, and sometimes it does. It really, really gets to me, but it is what it is. So yeah, there is an extremely large part of me that as much as I love my children, I want them out. I want them to go out and adult and be productive and be happy and have their own lives and just fuck off. <laughs> Call me on the weekend. Let's get together for brunch now and then. We'll do Christmas, like whatever, but like fuck off and live your life, right? And I need to find one because, you know, a bitch hasn't had one since she had kids. So, you know, I would like to, you know, come home from work and just take a power nap and then, you know, go to kickboxing class or go to the gym or fucking lay in bed and eat Oreos. Like, you know, whatever. Do me. And not have to worry about, you know, taking someone to work or picking somebody up from work or can you bring me to the mall or like, you know, yeah, you've been on your feet all day working, but you know, since you're here, can you make me dinner too? And then clean that up. And like, I mean, I, you know, with no please or thank you, or can I help you with that? Or like, do you know, and again, it's the nature of the beast. I was very much the same way as a kid. I'm not poo pooing anything, I'm just saying. For me, it wears on me from time to time, right? Every now and again, it's like, when are you leaving? <laughs> Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> so. The thought of, you know, some part of me wanting somebody else around is fucking insane to me. Like, in my waking, logical mind, I'm like, Huh? Eh? It don't make no sense to me, but I wouldn't mind it, you know, when I'm like older and like retired and you know what I mean? Then it might be kind of nice to have somebody around to bother or have somebody to bother you and <laughs> go for a nightly walk with or, you know, go to dinner with from time to time or you know, 
snuggle up in bed and, you know, watch a movie or whatever. Whatever people do when they're retired, I don't know. You know. You know. But once my kids are out, it would be nice to have a couple of years where I'm just like, just doing me for a while. Like, that would be so nice. <laughs> I don't know. I feel really stupid about it, but I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you can't control your dreams, right? I don't fucking know. But it does bother me. It, it bothers me greatly. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck that comes from. It's like a bitch has learned nothing. Like my my experience with all that shit's been like just, like just don't fucking do it.